Hello again. So today I wanted to just do um, a video once again about GUIs. I'm probably going to do a lot of those. Those are always my favorite to play with. i um, going to touch on three things today. Uh, the GUI saving its position where it is on your screen in case you move it and you want it to close it, reopen it, and have it be in that same position. And uh, resizing, I'll just touch that quickly. I should have put that in one of my last videos, but forgot to. So I'm just going to show it quickly here. And then I also wanted to show how to use like a GUI control to live update your GUI without having to close it and open it for, you know, a variable being changed or whatnot. So the first thing we got here, I went ahead and kind of made one already. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have my X and Y coordinates up here as variables. Uh, these are just the numbers I want the screen size to start at when I first open it for the first time from launching the program. Um, I just put F1 as a hotkey to launch it so that you can see what happens when I open it and close it. Then I got my GUI destroy, GUI resize, which I'll show you that, what that does here in a minute. And then I just made a text box. Uh, with some text I copied from the HK uh, Wikipedia. Now here's where we're gonna make sure we do everything. So for the GUI show, you know, you got your window name down here, your height, your width. Now normally these are gonna be where that is. So the 769 would normally be there. Well, I want the variable to be there. So I'm gonna do percent signs and put the variable in the middle. So I just used X chord. You know, that can be whatever you want if you just want it to be X or whatnot, and then Y core. Return. Now what's going to happen is when I close this GUI, it's going to jump down here to this handler, the GUI close. And here's where it's going to grab the coordinates of the new position. And that's just win git POS for position, comma, X chord, that variable we had up here, and Y chord, the variable we had up here and also here. And then I'll just destroy the GUI after that because I don't want to see it until I want to see it again. I'm going to go ahead and actually launch that. Close that out. Alright, so I'm going to push F1. So here's my GUI. It's that uh, you know 769389 height and width or XY coordinates on my computer. So now let's say I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to close it out. When I push that close, it's what's going to trigger the git position. I'm going to push F1 again. And as you see, it saved the position where I want it. You can move that wherever you want. It's always going to open in the last location. Whoops. Of course, you have to push X for it to actually grab those coordinates. Which I am not doing. There we go. Now, instead of just pushing the X, you can always add a button here that has the same handler. So I could put a button here that says like close or save coordinates and it would do the exact same thing. Um, so the next part is the resize here. All that does is make it so you can kind of come down here and you'll see the little arrows. Basically like what you can do in most programs, Chrome and whatnot, and just resize it to whatever you want. And there is a way to make the text actually change with the size, um, whether it's recentering it or making the text actually get bigger in size with your window. I'm going to show that in a much later video because that gets actually pretty complicated. Um, the code can be a little daunting at first, so I'm going to get into that later and that will probably be its own separate video on how to make everything actually move with the resizing of your GUI. Let me go ahead and close out of that one. So the next one is controlling your GUI. So for this example, I just made a simple uh, timer that just counts up every second. You know, maybe, basically it's a stopwatch, I guess, in a way, or a timer. Um, so here, um, I'm starting with a variable, timer count equals zero, because I want it to start at zero. I'm going to push F1. That's going to set my timer. And my timer name, I just named it timer. And it's going to go off every 500 uh, milliseconds, which that can actually be changed to 1,000, because I want it to go off every second. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, let's stick with 1,000. 
Then I have my GUI where I want it to be. I just kind of copied the GUI from the last one. The only thing I changed is uh, where I had all that text from Wikipedia. Actually just deleted it, left it blank. Let's just start out with nothing. You do need to add a variable there though. So V for variable, and then my variable, I just named it timer text. Show, return, GUI close. And then basically what's gonna happen is every one second or a thousand milliseconds, it's gonna come down here and it's gonna do timer count plus plus. And that just means go up by one. So, you know, hits one, hits again two, hits again three. Well, then I want that information to be displayed. So I'm gonna do a GUI control. I'm just keeping this one simple. So comma, comma, timer text, that variable that's up here. Because I'm saying, hey, I need you to target the line of code where that variable is at. And then this is going to be what I want it to be. So this, you know, you could have it be, you know, this is new text. So after one second, this blank field would actually display this is new text. But I want to use a variable. So I'm just going to use that percent sign, percent sign with my timer count in the middle, which starts at zero, counts up then displays it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. Push F1. See it's blank. There we go. One, two, three, four. And it's just counting up by seconds. It's pretty straightforward. Um, some other things you can do. Um, obviously I'm just using a second counter. You can make your timer go off however often you think you need this to be updated. Maybe you're grabbing information from another program and you only really need it to go off every 30 minutes. You can just change it to go off every 30 minutes. Um, obviously with the timer I just wanted seconds. If I wanted to count up by you know minutes I could have it go off every 60 seconds or 60,000 milliseconds. And then after 60 seconds, it would update to just one, meaning one minute passed. So that was pretty simple with that. Um, I do have a question. I'm using a free software for recording. If anybody knows any like good, uh, I mean, I don't need anything fancy. Uh, I can only record up to 15 minutes, so I'm kind of looking for something that can go a little farther than that. So if anybody knows anything that's free or you know pretty cheap, I mean prefer free obviously <laughs> uh, please let me know uh, if you want to see more of these kind of videos uh, I'm uploading two or three per week I'm probably gonna upload another one actually tonight just because I have um, some good ideas with I and I file demos uh, any other ideas you got comment below let me know if you want me to expand on this in any way comment below and let me know thank you guys see ya